नमस्कार वेलकम टू द अक्षय पात्र फैमिलीज फॉर चेंज ज्ञाना होस्टेड बाय टेम्पा एंड द ब्रांड न्यू मायामी साउथ फ्लोरिडा चैप्टर This is our fifth online gala of 2020 from the Boston Gala Recipe for Change Technology for Change and Philanthropy for Change we have had speakers like Mrs Sudha Murthy Narayan Murthy Shankar Mahadevan Vinita Bali Bamal Irani Chef Sanjeev Kapoor and Paresh Rao If you missed any of these delightful conversations please do watch them on the Akshay Patra USA YouTube channel Families for change encapsulates everything from the macro families and global change makers coming together for families in India to the micro a single meal that is served in school that brings the child to school helps him focus in class instills a love for learning helps him or her graduate from school and educate their own children let me say this one more time A meal in class can impact generations. Thanks to the enterprising and ever smiling chapter and volunteer teams, we have surpassed our fundraising from 2019. India needs this. Akshay Patra in India has been working tirelessly to serve not just children in school but their families during the pandemic. This year alone since lockdown started we have served 82 million meals to migrant workers and their families Let me tell you a small story There used to be a family of lizards living on the roof of a palace The mother the father the children the grandchildren all used to happily live on the roof and watch the happenings of the court below One day there was a party and everybody decided that they would love to go to the party they were all excited and heading out the door when they noticed that the mother lizard was not leaving and they asked her why not and she said well if i leave the roof of this palace is going to collapse as a wise man said see the work in you separate yourself from the work and trust that the universe has a plan for those in need akshay patra has been around for 20 years providing selfless service feeding children but one thought always comes to my mind every single day it is the destiny of the child to eat the divinity in each of us enables that destiny it is an opportunity for us to give Every single day in the past 8 years that I have worked for Akshay Patra I have had the opportunity of thanking someone whether it was a volunteer a team member a donor or a youth ambassador who put aside their studies and their play to feed children in India This opportunity of seva defines Akshay Patra the pot with unlimited food for education whoever needs it it provides so on with the program let's take a look at what our chapter chairs have to say followed by a video about akshay patra good morning everybody uh, we are happy to have all our chapter chairs join us for the families for change gala it's hosted by the florida chapters from tampa and south florida so i would like to have everybody say just a couple of sentences on what what the theme means to you families for change yeah i think uh, when you say families for change i think there is kind of a i see like a, a a dual side to this so on one side you know we we had and even in our family uh, you know our daughters getting involved uh, you know she started inviting her friends and then when i look at the other side of it you know when we are uplifting these students the whole family is getting uplifted so it's families on both sides that are pushing the ball and then you know the ball basically uplifts the families on the other side so it's a very nice sort of a joint team effort on uh, of both sides to kind of drive india forward thank you uh, kavita i have seen 
kids uh, uh, while i was doing the campaign the parents were involved but when they informed the kids that this is what the akshay patra is about they jumped into the program they were so excited and the other one calls yesterday auntie i went around in my house and then i got some uh, flyers and then i got some money couple of people donated too so seeing that if it has an effect on the parents too so from the beneficiary side and like when the kids are involved and you see the parents it's so happy that the kids are being fed and studying Sheila what are your thoughts on families for change one family at a time we are conveying the awareness of akshay patra so so it's like one family here and one family there and slowly it becomes two and four and six and eight and 10 and that's one thing i feel and then the other thing is that this this um we all we all know that you know is the 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 giver actually has a greater amount of joy than sometimes the receiving person um they may not even know who we are that person who's receiving it but then we know that we are doing our part so the way i look at it is what um Sheila just said family at a time that's so true but at the same time when we as individuals who we all have families are getting exposed to akshay patra and indirectly exposing our children to it and then watching our children go out and talk to their friends to grow this population is so feels so warm that you know the kids are also understanding that this is very important it's their counterpart in india who also need to have a future they very much realize that we have a good future because we were born in a particular family but that does not mean that we ignore the kids in india who didn't get the same opportunity families are connecting with families in india and uh, i think uh, during covid is becoming a lot more apparent that it's not just the child educating the child and taking care of the child's family and them being able to be uh, skilled and educated above us the next generation that you develop but it's the current generation that needs our help right now and i'm going to turn to venkat and uh, venkat tell us about your experience with akshay patra from a newcomer's uh, perspective i myself basically i went to uh, the jppih high school so there uh, on a daily basis uh, during school days i do see uh, kids getting uh, is clean you know, midday meal pro, uh, meals so once i heard about how akshay patra came from 1500 meals to 1.8 million uh, in 1.8 million kids per day that's really touching and uh, motivating uh, definitely coming to the goal of going from 1.8 million to 5 million meals per day Uh, really i would like to see that day come very soon so thank you everybody for joining our call this was our phenomenal group of chapter chairs from miami south florida and from tampa miami south florida is the newest chapter this year and uh, i welcome everybody who has joined from there our chapter chairs for really bringing up the movement with um, on the feet ground support tampa for continuing to phenomenally great raise a lot of money for us and supporting a lot more children as we go along thank you so much thank you thank you thank, thank you. you it was somewhere around the year 2000 a certain thought came up that we are providing this small amount of prasadam to the visitors who come here can we do something who are not coming to the temple and started in a small way feeding 1500 children ನಾವು ಪ್ರತಿ ಒಂದು ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೂ ಸರಿಯಾದ ಸಮಯಕ್ಕೆ ಊಟ ತಲುಪಿಸಿದರೆ ಆ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಮನೆಗೆ ಹೋಗದ ಮನೆಗೆ ಹೋಗದಂತೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಬಿಸಿ ಊಟನೇ ಊಟ ಮಾಡಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾಭ್ಯಾಸ ಇಲ್ಲೇ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಆಗ್ತೈತೆ ಊಟ ಮಾಡಿ ಅವ್ರ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣವನ್ನು ಪಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಅನುಕೂಲ ಆಗ್ತೈತೆ ಅದೊಂದು ಗುರಿ ನಮಗಿದೆ ಕುಚ್ಚನ ಕುಚ್ಚ ಆತರೆತೆ ಜಸ್ಸೆ ಸೋಮವಾರಕ್ಕೂ ಇನ್ನಿ ಮಂಡೇಗೂ ಕುಚ್ಚನ ಅಲಗ ದೇಸೆ ದಾಲ್ ಸಬ್ಜಿ ರೋಟಿ ಕೋಯ್ ಬಾ ಓ ಯೆಲ್ಲೋ ಕಲರ್ ಕಿ ರೋಟಿ ಓ ಬಹುತ ಅಚ್ಚಿ ಲಗ್ತಿ ಯೆ ಉಸ್ಮೆ ಅಜ್ವೈನ್ education is a real asset and can change 
the entire family's economic and social situation. This is our confidence. Public, private, NGOs, all of us work together and feed our children, see that children are educated, their skills are built up, they are employable. I think the most fun part was visiting the schools because I got to talk with a group of kids, all girls who are my age, and I realized that they were just like me. They had the same goals, same ambitions. So your support is keeping them in school, feeding them and changing them, and changing the cycle of poverty for the entire family. In this extraordinary effort to feed the hungry children in schools by contributing whatever you can. So for all of those who are watching this, I suggest that uh, you find some fulfillment and joy, love and equanimity by getting involved in any way that you can with Akshapatra. It's indeed a pleasure to have both Jamshed Godrej and Suman Sinha joining us today for our online gala. And uh, I want to start by asking Jamshed to talk a little bit about his personal journey. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about what it was like to be growing up. Uh, what were your interests? Uh, were you, were you uh, interested in academics, sports? What were your hobbies? you know, where you're a naughty boy, you know, anything that makes it personal for you. Yeah, thanks, thanks, uh, Sri and Vandana, and uh, my good friend Suman. Uh, you know, um, when I, I was in school, of course, in Bombay, that was cathedral school. And uh, I was all, I mean, my, my family used to call me an enfant terrible. So I really used to, enjoy, you know, uh, teasing everyone, having a good time, running around, making a mess. And, uh, but in school, you know, my main uh, interest and passion was sports. And I played every game in school except cricket. For some reason, I was never able to concentrate on cricket. I found it too slow and too boring. So, I mean, even to this day, you know, when, when everyone's going crazy about cricket scores, I say, well, what, what's all that going on? <laughs> so I've never, it's very unusual, but very, never took off on cricket. And, uh, but sports was really uh, what I enjoyed. I mean, everything. I did swimming, I did football. I captained uh, most of the teams uh, at, at the time that I was uh, going in school. And uh, I really had a great time. And my ambition was to come last in class in biology. Unfortunately, I never made it to last. <laughs> and, uh, but it was a good time. And, you know, my family, everyone used to think that I'm going to definitely fail my school leaving certificate. But that didn't happen either. So, but it was fun. I think I had a really wonderful time at school. And Cathedral, you know, at that time, uh, our school was uh, not co-ed at that time. It became co-ed after I left. And uh, so, you know, it was, we had the boys' school on one side, we had the girls' school on the other side. And there was always these uh, wonderful socials that uh, uh, schools like Cathedral used to organize. And they were sort of uh, the highlights at that time. And even at a very young age, you know, my parents were both very, very keen uh, sailors. And uh, they used to sail small sailing boats uh, in Bombay Harbor. And then I grew up... Uh, you know, learning how to sail and then became very passionate about sailing and racing and 
So even to this day, uh, my you know once a year, I have to get out of Bombay for at least a month uh, on a long trip somewhere. So you know I've done Maldives a number of times. I've been to Port Blair a couple of times, Sri Lanka. Uh, I've been to Lakshadweep, Goa, of course. So that's a big, uh, big interest of mine is yachting and sailing. Wonderful. And then after school, what happened, Jamshed? Where did you go after school? So after school, I joined IIT in Pawai here in Bombay for a year, and then I went to another IIT in Chicago, the Illinois Institute of Technology. And then I finished my engineering uh, undergraduate there, and then I came back home. And tell us a little bit about uh, when you were growing up. You know, obviously you. Uh, you were part of a very illustrious family, a business family. Was there this expectation growing up that you were always going to come back and be part of the family business? Yeah, I think that was a given. Yeah. I think uh, I don't think there was much of a choice uh, given to us at that time. Yeah. I know today things are very different and yeah. kids have a lot of choice, yeah. but we were not given a choice. And I used to always uh, envy my cousin, uh, who was just a couple of years younger to me. And uh, he just said, no, I'm not cut out for business. I don't want to be in business. I only want to study birds of prey. And uh, everyone in the family used to come down on him like a ton of bricks. <laughs> and what is this? You're not grateful at all. You know who you are, this, that, the other, you know. But he was really steadfast and strong. And he managed to keep all the pressures away. So, you know, this was... For a business family, it yeah. was quite unusual at the time. <laughs> and he's become very famous in his own right, I know. Yes, so, and he's, yeah. uh, he's written some wonderful bird uh, yeah. books on birds of prey. And, you know, this is a person who never studied, uh, you know, anything to do with ornithology, etc. But yeah. learned, he taught himself everything and uh, became an expert. He's written the most outstanding book on birds of prey for India. And when you went to the IIT in Chicago, the other one, what was your major? What did you do? Uh, mechanical engineering. And was and that, in those was days, that I think they, they called was it that because you're going to come back to do mechanical yeah. engineering at Goldridge? Yes. But, you know, interestingly, I was always very mechanically oriented uh, right through school. I mean, okay. my, my father used to buy me lots of Meccano sets in those days. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I used to, I had a horn uh, train uh, set, Hornley, Hornby Dublo, I think it was called. Okay. And, uh, and he used to set up a train in, on our uh, balcony. And uh, so I was very, I actually was quite mechanically oriented. And, you know, interestingly, my father, who was really the, the sort of uh, the, the drive behind uh, the, the businesses, all our engineering related businesses, never actually went to college. So, you know, his, mm. his father pulled him out of school early and said that, you know, enough of education. Now you come and learn everything about uh, how to make things and uh, get into business. Got it. And uh, tell us a little bit about influences growing up. Obviously, I'm sure your parents had a big influence, but were the influences apart from them, outside of the family? Yeah, you know, my... Important? Uh, yeah. I mean, our whole family was deeply involved, you know, and, and my grandfather, we all stayed in the same uh, building as of when I was growing up. And my grandfather would have dinner with us every day. And, uh, you know, he and my father would argue and argue about various things. And most of us kids never understood anything of what was going on. And we would always complain after that, why are they fighting all the time? You know, and, uh, but we grew up in a, in a very sort of, uh, 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 bus I mean, it was, it was, the talk was not only about business. It was really about, you know, my grandfather and father and then my mother and now, you know, my generation, uh, passion for what we were, what we saw as what was necessary to be done. So, you know, the schools came up, uh, you know, Vandana went to the Udiachal schools run uh, in the company. Uh, uh, the housing colony came up our hospital and clinics came up. So we really created a township. Uh, you know, we called it uh, a garden township because everyone in the family was very, very nature oriented. 
And uh, that's how I got my interest uh, in what I do today, especially with uh, the Worldwide Fund for Nature and uh, many of the other uh, uh, interests that I have now, you know, on sustainability, on the environment. And uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, it's sort of evolved over time that nature has really been a big draw for all of us. Mm. And that's, that's what really... I mean, I, I, it's really very, I'm very passionate about uh, conservation. So, you know, that's one thing that I, I consider really important. Yeah. So, Sumant, let's, let's turn to you. So, very, uh, very similar set of questions. Tell us a little bit about growing up. You also come from a family that's given a lot back, uh, a family that served the country in many ways. But tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up. Where did you grow up? Where did you go to school? Some of the similar questions to you know what we we had uh, for Jamshed. Okay, sure. No, thank you so much, uh, Sri, for uh, inviting me to this event, and uh, thank you also to Akshay Patra. Um, very fascinating listening to uh, Jamshed. So, hello, Jamshed. Um, good to hear about your background. Uh, you know, my um, background is somewhat different. I grew up in a middle class family. My father was in the IAS, um, uh, so he was a bureaucrat at the time that I was growing up. Um, and I always remember that, you know, into us was drilled the issue of working hard and doing well academically as, as we were growing up. And in some ways, that was made out to be the absolutely the most important thing for all of us. And, um, and um, you know, we were told you have to you have to do well in school, you have to get into a good college, and all of that. And so, my um, my school years were mostly spent in study. Unfortunately, of course, I and played. And where was games. this? Where was this Suman? Where were you so, growing you know, up? My, because my father was in the IES, he used to get posted to all parts of uh, the country. Um, we spent about three and a half years, four years in Germany when I was a little toddler, not a toddler but a child. So that was a pretty formative year, you know, time of my life. Um, and then we were, you know, mostly in between, let's say, Patna, which was my father's home cadre, which is Bihar, and Delhi. And so changing schools every couple of years, changing schools, going to a different school. And, um, and then I did my last four years at uh, St. Columbus in Delhi and uh, really spent most of my time there studying, to be very honest with you. I did play a few sports, uh, but not at the school level, mostly for my class. Um, and um, as I said, the whole thing was how to get into the best possible college after that. And I was fortunate in that I got into IIT Delhi and into St. Stephen's College. And at that time, um, you know, my father uh, was very keen that I joined the IAS. And I was quite keen to do so as well. And so, um, so I was thinking of really going to Stephen's because Stephen's was a three-year course. So I thought I'd finish that and then take the IAS exam as quickly as possible. Uh, but, you know, in, my, in that year that I was in, uh, there was a strike in Delhi University and IIT opened first. Uh, and I'd gone into IIT Delhi. And so I decided to just go and check it out. And then, of course, when you go there and you're you know, at a very impressionable age, uh, I got caught by some seniors who ragged me. And then, you know, they said, are you crazy to be going to, uh, to DU or to Stephen's? And so they insisted that I stay back and go to uh, IIT itself. And frankly, I decided to do that. And uh, it turned out to be a very good decision, actually, because I really enjoyed my time at IIT. And um, I think I studied a lot less in IIT compared to the time that I studied at, in school. Um, and, but it also allowed me, I think, to really grow as an individual. And, um, you know, I, I did okay in studies, but I did a lot of extracurricular activities when I was at IIT. And that really, I think, is what allowed me to really grow as an individual and, you know, do a lot of different things and try out my hand at different things and so on. So, so it was actually a pretty interesting time uh, when I was there. Yamsha, just going back to you, you know, just before we got on this call, we were talking to Vandana and I was asking her, I was, I was, I was telling her that, you know, she's a Bombay girl and she said, actually, no, I'm a Godrej girl. She grew up very much as part of the Godrej family. I know this is something that's true when you talk to people, employees, ex-employees, people who've been part, you know, part of the Godrej family. 
that there's just this affiliation that they have, right? This connection that they have to the Godrej group, uh, to you as an individual, but you know, to the other family members. Uh, there's, there's certainly this philosophy of taking care of employees in many ways. Uh, and you know, Vandana talked about, you spoke about this as well, you know, starting schools, the Godrej campus and all of that. I think, you know, for a lot of entrepreneurs who are listening to this or viewing this, Tell us a little bit about your philosophy, the philosophy of your family in terms of running businesses. What my grandfather used to say when we were kids and growing up and we would even visit the factory, you know what a gala is? It's, a, it's just a very, very small little place where you can do some, get some work done. So he started in one of these tiny little galas. And then kept on, as he kept growing and expanding, you know, he kept on taking the neighboring galas, etc. And then the factory became quite large in, uh, in uh, Lalbagh Parel. And in fact, it was the factory that Vandana's father, Mr. G.K. Dathar, used to run. And uh, the getting into this place, you have to go through a very, very narrow and very crowded, uh, uh, tiny little street you know, with housing on both sides. Terrible. I mean, in those days, of course, for, for Mumbai, you know, it was all part of the Bombay plan at that time, etc. cetera. And, uh, but it was housing for mill workers because that area was all mill workers, essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and until much, a little, much later, you know, when there was a massive strike in, in, of mill workers and then the mills never reopened. Uh, but, but the thing about it, my grandfather, every day, he used to have to go through this narrow place. And yeah. every day he used to say, you know, it's terrible that my workers have to live in these horrible conditions. And so when, uh, when he actually managed to buy this plot of land in Vikroli, which is an eastern suburb of uh, Mumbai, at that time, he actually, the first thing he started, even before setting up a factory, was to set up housing. For, for the workers and employees. And, uh, and at, along with that, you know, they started a school. Uh, and uh, there was a, a wonderful lady named was Kuvar by Vakil. Everyone called her auntie. And uh, she had studied under Tagore. And she had understood, you know, how uh, the importance of teaching in, uh, in a way that is not rote, you know, I mean, where people mm -hmm. are actually made to learn things and nature is very much a part of it, etc. So she, uh, you know, she, my, my dad and my grandfather really believed in the way she was doing it and she wanted to start a school. Mm -hmm. So we slowly, slowly started a school. But the most important thing actually at that time was not just the school, but, you know, in India, our biggest problem at that time was large families. Yeah. So uh, my grandfather said that I'm going to set up the finest school uh, ever, but on one condition that I will take the first two children free. Mm. And if there's a third child in the family, I will take the third child, but only if they have a family planning operation. And, uh, you know, the draw of the school and, and the housing in Vikroli became such that yeah. one by one, you know, all these families started uh, practicing family control and family planning. And, uh, and that was a big thing. My mother used to tell me about that she used to go door to door, talking to the women, you know, explaining to them what it is about, what, what's family planning about, how do you go about it, what's the benefit of doing it, why have such large families when you can have two children, you'll be happier, they'll be happier, the healthcare is there. You don't have to worry about uh, childbirth and, you know, that you might lose your children. So slowly this, I mean, it took many decades before all this really became strong. But one telling factor of this was that at the peak, our school had something like 12,000 children. Hmm. And then as the family planning program became stronger and stronger, the numbers kept coming down because we didn't take children from outside. And it came down to as low as 3,000. So you can see that as the company was growing and having more employees, we were having less children in school only because of the family planning program. So it was a combined, you know, my grandfather, father, they all believed that this type of uh, combined effort, mm -hmm. you know, 
And in many ways, it's very much similar to what you would see in Jamshedpur. You know, when mm-hmm. Jamshedji Tata set up the steel mills in in Jamshedpur, this was exactly there was nothing. I mean, I'm, That's you, right. someone knows at that time in Bihar, uh, in those places, there was really nothing. It was this was it. You know, it was the it was the steel plant and everything around the steel plant, and you had to provide everything. And the same sort of thing we had in Bikroli in those days. Now, of course, we say that bomb. You know, Bombay has expanded so much that Vikroli has become the center of Bombay. But you know, that's 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 aside. Uh, but the idea was that you know, as the company grows, as it as it becomes profitable, you really must uh, do anything and everything possible uh, for the welfare of of employees. And I must uh, tell you, Jamshed, that you know, I grew up. One of the places I grew up in my formative years was Jamshedpur. So I can speak to you know what what it means to not only really grow up in a township but to be in a place where you know the tatas had a big influence in terms of their generosity so suman going back to you take us through you know the journey up to the point of time where you started something because i want to spend some time talking about your entrepreneurial journey but tell us what happened between city bank and then sure ashwin First of all, let me just say it was fascinating listening to Jamshed right now. You know, I just got a very broad sweep of Indian corporate history, so it was really fascinating. Thank you for that, Jamshed. Um, you know, when I, uh, when I was at City, I was in City, and then I was doing investment banking. I, I worked at City for about five years, and uh, they moved me to London. I was in London for about three odd years, working at. Uh, then I left City and joined another firm called ING Bearings. Uh, and I was an emerging markets banker, so I was traveling to all parts of the world, to the Middle East, to Southeast Asia, to Eastern Europe, as it was opening up, uh, to Latin America. And then, um, you know, in my last job when I was at ING Bearings in New York, I realized that I was working for an Anglo-Dutch firm covering Latin America uh, and living in New York. And I said, I'm an Indian guy. What am I doing with my life? Um, and, and, you know, I said, ultimately, this is back in around the early 2000s, after I'd been doing investment banking for about 10, 11 years. And um, I just, I, you know, my thinking was that at some point, India would basically begin to take off like China was taking off at that point in time. And I didn't want to miss that opportunity. And the second thing was that I, I just fundamentally missed being in India. You know, while, while I had been living in the U.S. for many years and in London for some time, I really just missed being back in India, the sights and smells, just the presence of being here. And so I always had the desire to come back. And uh, during one of my trips, uh, as it so happened coincidentally, I met uh, uh, Kumar Manganam Birla, who is the head of the Adutya Birla Group, which is, you know, one of India's largest uh, business conglomerates. And he was uh, very young, obviously, at that time. Uh, And he was basically going through a transformation of the group itself. And he was trying to look for new people that he could hire, new influencers that he could bring in, maybe more international orientation. And um, so he offered me the chance to come back to India and uh, head up the finance uh, area for his entire group, uh, which was actually a very incredible opportunity because I was still relatively young. And to go into a large group like that, uh, you know, a large uh, almost a, a, a group like the Godrej Group had been around for many, many decades. And to go in there at such a senior level was actually an incredible opportunity. But at the same time, you know, leaving the U.S., leaving a nice little house in the suburbs, you know, my wife, Vishali, was working in, uh, as well. My daughter was going to a Montessori. To leave all of that and just come back to India wasn't such an easy decision. And so I actually said no, that, you know, I don't think I can do that. But then, uh, you know, I just bumped into him about many months later, and uh, he repeated the offer. And I had been thinking about it, and I'd just been telling myself that probably a missed opportunity, you know, one has to sometimes take the uh, less beaten path. And so, therefore, I decided to, at that point, make the, you know, take the plunge and come back. And then, you know, out of the blue, one day, I got a call from a headhunter saying, Look, there's this new company called Suzlon, uh, which is a wind turbine manufacturing company. Would you be interested in working for them? And I said, why would I be interested in working for them when I'm working in a much larger company and a much more senior position? 
but you know at that time suzlon had uh, done very well uh, they had just come from nowhere uh, and this is back in 2007 when you know there was this massive liquidity driven boom that was happening in the stock markets and suzlon market cap had really gone up tremendously and climate change seemed like a very interesting area to me at that time uh, i i had the sense that it would become a much more important issue when i looked you know at, at it much more deeply and frankly until that time i had not really thought about climate change very significantly but because of this opportunity i started thinking more about it and i realized that the world was not in a good place and was getting into a worse place every every year and so therefore companies or or activities that were dealing with or addressing climate change would perhaps be a very interesting or uh, very good way to uh, to uh, you know good area to move into and so that's why i moved into suzlon at that point in time and then while i was at suzlon i realized that uh, you know we had the obviously the global financial crisis and the markets fundamentally changed and so i was at suzlon for about a year and a half again learned a lot about the about the wind turbine business uh, but then there was this there was this opportunity opening up in in renewable energy in india to actually become like a actually a renewable energy power producer rather than an equipment manufacturer which is what suzlon used to do and uh, so i saw this opportunity because i was in that company at that point and i said you know what Uh, i had always wanted to actually go off and do something on my own i had this little desire to try to try to uh, branch out on my own and see how i would end up doing and so i saw this opportunity and at that time also what had happened is that uh, there was a lot of third party capital coming into india and so my feeling was that if i basically was willing to commit myself and take the risk and the opportunity was there and you could probably get third party capital so i said why don't i take the jump and try to put this whole thing together and so that's what i did uh, and so in 2008 i left in 2010 sorry i left so not 10 years ago and started this company you know my final question to you before i turn it over to jamshed is that this is an online event that we're doing for akshay patra which impacts millions of children every day you know i don't you know whenever the school year actually happens which is not happening right now in india so as you know on a normal day akshay patra feeds about 1.8 million children a healthy hot nutritious meal and this is also coming from the desire of the organization that no child ultimately should be prevented a good education because they're going hungry and a lot of children you know don't come to school because of the fact that uh, they don't get a good meal My question to you uh, Samantha is that what is your aspiration or what's your message for the children of India right what what would you there's a lot to be done but what what is in the context of what, what Akshay Patel is doing what is your message to them you know first of all let me say that what Akshay Patel is doing is extremely extremely uh, noble um it's very critical uh you know we uh, operate a lot of our wind farms and solar farms are in very backward areas and so i travel to these areas quite frequently and um, i see a lot of the local schools because very often we help in in uh, funding local schools or putting rooftop solar solutions on them and so on and uh, the infrastructure and the facilities at a lot of these places are very 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 poor and um, you know kids are are uh, poorly dressed they don't have shoes um you know in the middle of winter they don't have sweaters uh it's it's pretty tough for them and so therefore i think that whatever you guys are doing is extremely extremely positive because i think between uh, you know whatever all of us can do uh put together is going to be less than what needs to be done and so i think we all have to do our absolute best in helping out as much as possible you know my message to children ultimately is that the best way forward is to study hard and really work hard in school because ultimately if you do work hard opportunities will open up uh, and you will be able to have a better life than perhaps your parents had before you and then and you know and and so get educated study hard do well and eventually post school whether you you know whether they go into a vocational course or whether they go into college if that opportunity presents itself i think um, that becomes very critical skill building becomes very critical 
and then of course there are the usual life lessons which is you know uh, be honest uh, work sincerely and i think if you uh, follow some of those uh, principles and tenets then i think you'd end up uh, doing well and having a good life and i think ultimately that's what all of us can aspire for which is to have a good life wonderful thank you so much jamshed you have the last word what's what's your message you know for the children or maybe to the children of india but you know i mean i i have no doubt at all that uh, education is really the the one one thing that will make a huge difference in anyone's lives and especially children who come from difficult or underprivileged uh, backgrounds i mean for them education is but you know together with education i think you have to teach your skills also uh skills which will uh, uh uh you know allow them to have some dignity i i believe that uh, we really need to move our education system uh to a system which allows children to be prepared for the real world you know i think very often uh our education system doesn't allow that so i think you know uh learning a skill is absolutely essential and uh so i think we need to you know move towards that uh, that type of a system that's that's my strong belief but you know there's no doubt that you know whether it's skills or education i mean that is the number one differentiator that will make this country uh, a different country wonderful thank you so much i must i must say i'm sure i agree with you you know my first experience of you know viewing people who do these jobs as equals when i came to the us for the first time was also a shock to me like i think it just made me completely reframe the way i thought about some of these things but uh, you know we've come to the end of the session so i must thank you both very very much i must also thank the people who submitted the questions you know for the session um this has been extremely inspiring thank you both for sharing your journeys your personal stories and for being a part of uh, the akshay patra movement so uh, with that i'm going to sign off and hand it back to vandana thank you uh, thank you shri that was that was amazing um, i have to say that uh, jamshed ji your just listening to you uh, took me back to when i all my life life cycle being i think my father joined godrej right about the time that i was born and i remember going with him to lalbagh through the narrow gullies that you were talking about and uh, seeing the plant and being it was a wow thing for me to be able to see where my dad worked and uh, i think godrej was started in 1897 and i think you were exactly 123 years ahead of your time with making sure that the the schools were there the colonies were there for everybody to stay in and uh, i remember when we were in school we had only 18 students in my class and we all started at kindergarten and all the way until high school we had pretty much the same same group of uh, friends and whether they were a workers family or a management family it did not matter we all played together and every it was in it was a very socially unifying thing that i grew up with and um, I, i i really salute you because whether you give away hundreds and thousands of dollars or rupees you lived it you lived that philanthropy and you showed people the way of how things really should be done and um, hats off to you and your family i mean this is a story that i'm so proud to host as an akshay patra ceo and it is um, i think uh, these are the kind of stories that we all want to listen to and we are very grateful that you joined us tonight i know it's very late for you but uh, thank you so much um, sumanth i can't thank you enough for joining us i think yours is the story that all nris can relate to at some point we all think that we all want to go back to india and uh, when ravi and i were uh, young in our 30s we said that we have 50000 dollars we are going to go back to india and <laughs> i was the one who actually went and tested it out with my children put them to school and uh, 
it wasn't me, but our daughter who said, that's enough. I'm going back to school where I'm, uh, I like it better over there. So we came back, but uh, both my husband and I, we both decided that uh, going, giving back to our uh, motherland that gave us so much an education, a good uh, hearty conditioning of what, uh, what humanity is about. Uh, we should be able to serve from anywhere on the planet. It doesn't matter where we are. But I think uh, this is what, you know, IITians do. My husband's also one from IIT. And we always believe that this is a community and a humanity that, that is supported well if we all work together. And it's not us against them. So whether it's climate change or whether there's a pandemic or whether there are orange skies above me tonight today because of the <laughs> fire in California, I think all of these world's problems are right at our doorstep and uh, there is no there is no escaping it there is no way that we can possibly hide because it's right in our homes we need to be very careful we do have akshay patra has a lot of uh, solar plants in our kitchens we cook with a lot of um, climate friendly equipment and materials okay. um, but we would love to have you visit our kitchen and Please come here. As a little yeah. bit of input from your expertise. Uh, Jamshed ji, thank you. Godrej is doing a lot for Akshay Patra. Um, thank you for your support. We started this conversation way back many years ago and uh, it's still going strong. I would love to be that partnership to continue. But thank you so much tonight. I really hope that we would have you all join us again. And uh, Sri, thank you for moderating. Um, very well done. I, this is a this is a very this is a program I'm going to be very proud of uh, in my uh, in my career. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Sri. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. Bye. 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 Hi, everybody. So welcome back to our event with Akshay Patra, Families for Change. Today, we have the good fortune of welcoming none other than everyone's favorite Bollywood star, Ravina Tandon. And uh, as we will know slowly today, is there is a much deeper and a much more sensitive side to her that most of us have never known about or heard about. And uh, one is, of course, what Akshay Patra is for her and uh, what uh, we are, you know, how we are working together with. But um, welcome, Ravina. Very nice to have you at our program. And uh, it's my pleasure, Vandana. And thank you for having me here at this very honorable event, because uh, as you know that this event not only means a lot to Akshay Patra because of the kind of work they're doing, but means a lot to us because there are people here who make what this is all about. This whole noble cause is all about. Thank you. I mean, I, I have seen you, I have heard you doing so many philanthropic causes and I'll get to that. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, let's start when when you were a child, you were growing up in a family or a showbiz family, what were the perks or what were the pains of, of that? I mean, I'm sure there were challenges and there were a lot of uh, great things that happened because of that. Tell us. Well, um, honestly, that was a very, very long time ago. So <laughs> you're, you're going to push me into flashback. Uh, but yes, um, uh, we were a film family, but uh, so to speak, very, very non-filmy. Uh, I, uh, we were not allowed to go on my dad's shootings except when it was vacation time. So either we'd all take off to Uti or to Kashmir where my dad would be shooting. And that's the only time when I visited the sets. Uh, we had everyone coming over. Uh, Chintu ji was a dear friend. Amit ji, Jaya ji, they used to come home. Moshmi ji, Neetu ji, uh, you know, um, uh, Hari uncle used to come and stay with us. In fact, uh, Sanjeev Kumar ji, when he, uh, had his heart attack, uh, uh, my mom used to look after him. Uh, she was like a sister to him. And uh, uh, I, I, I remember those growing up days where uh, uh, Hari uncle used to be staying with us. And uh, every time he'd go into the uh, bathroom and uh, smoke up and my mom would be firing him because he was not allowed to smoke anymore. So yeah, those were growing up days. Uh, school time, it was tough because I think in those days, Hindi films was not cool. 
so i remember most of my friends who were from bandra or from uh, uh, you know south bombay they would look down upon hindi films and hindi music so in school yes it was tough uh, because they would mostly alienate you oh my god her dad's from the hindi movies oh my god you know and if i were to say yes you know uh, so what did you do over the weekend and i would say oh amit uncle came over for dinner or they would say oh do you know all these people and i'd say yeah they just came over for dinner day for yesterday and they would be like oh stop showing off so it was a catch 22 situation so it was i i think it's very very difficult for film kids because the pressure is so much on them uh, we are from the industry and uh, so to speak i think it is a uh, uh, it's it's always been an ancient tradition that uh, Uh, most of the children take up what their parents do whether it is a, a rashan ki dukan or it is an uh, ambani or it is uh, anywhere in the world it's it's mostly children follow in their parents footsteps but i think for our film kids our industry kids uh, life is very very tough i think uh, a lot of people face uh, insecurities and jealousies and you know the pressure is too much on them to either prove or to doubly prove what they have to do or it's very difficult for them even to get into their uh, parents uh, professions these days uh, i actually did not intend to join the films i've always said that i am in this industry by default uh, because uh, i never grew up thinking oh i'm going to grow up and become an actress never so i in fact wanted to join the uh, ips uh, the indian police force uh, the indian police services and uh, I uh, was very very inspired by Kiran Bedi ji she was my idol and since uh, you know we were young we used to read in the newspapers how she used to round up these gundas and lock them up and you know and it was so inspiring and she was like a tigress and uh, that is what I wanted to become actually after I passed uh, you know graduated or gave my 12th but unfortunately that did not happen i only ended up wearing the uniform in my movies <laughs> I, i was going to say but, uh, you in uniform <laughs> but but better so because I, i i get to play so many roles and so many characters now in in the profession that i've chosen so um, yes it's 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 been a journey uh, like i said i'm in this industry by default i did not click any pictures or anything uh, uh, vivek vaswani ji uh, saw me at a pizza parlor when i had gone with uh, my friends from college in my first year of college and he was the producer and he and anant were eating at the same pizza parlor and they uh, just said oh my god we have to go talk to that girl and vivek actually uh, tells people in his interviews that we saw ravina across and i told anant anant balani was the director of patthar ke phool my first film that anant there your heroine is sitting there and they just came up to me and said uh, excuse me can we talk to your dad or your mom or someone because are you interested in movies and i looked up at vivek vaswani and he was my brother's friend actually so i knew him so i said vivek hi this is i'm uh, rajiv's sister you didn't recognize me and he was like oh my god this is ravi ji's daughter and that's how the whole thing happened so uh, you know it was actually pretty accidental and the next day i was shooting so that's my childhood my joining the industry all you know encapsulated in into a quick short version for you <laughs> no more on this <laughs> well you said a flashback but i'm honestly i just i was watching bade mia chote mia uh, yesterday and you could be having that shoot yesterday and uh, <laughs> so you are today in just a different outfit you have not changed an iota i had soft to you i whatever you are doing <laughs> you look so fresh so young and so beautiful and radiant whatever you're doing it's working i'm thank you very much gosh enough you're getting tears into my eyes i'm really appreciate it thank you so much you but I, i tell people that a i think i should thank my genes <laughs> uh, and um, i think secondly i i believe a person starts showing what they are in their heart on their face you know uh it's 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 all it, it it just comes onto you what you are it completely mirrors your soul your face your eyes mirror your soul and i strongly believe in that so when people ask me what do you do i say i'm just happy and content in my heart and that's what works well don't be ready to play any auntie or grandma roles anytime soon we want to see you <laughs> role for many many years <laughs> so sweet <laughs> so tell me you'd already told me what that you did not intend to be uh, an actor and you wanted to be a policeman but when you were young 
um, you remember, what would you tell your younger self now that, you know, um, you have done so many movies and you had that flashback when somebody noticed you as a, as a movie star? I actually have no regrets at all the way my life has panned out. I think we waste, humans waste a lot of time in thinking, aisa nahi hua hota to aisa hota, aisa nahi hota to aisa hota. You know, I, I think they waste a lot of time in regret. I believe one should never, never, ever regret whatever happens to them in their life because I think everyone's life has a certain destiny, a certain path to follow. And depends on what situation you're in. I'm in a happy place. I'm content with my life. My life has exactly panned out the way I wanted. Yes, there are hiccups and yes, there are struggles. Everyone's life has struggles and everyone has a story to tell. But that is what life is all about. But when I look at my kids and I look at my parents and I look at my husband and I look at my family around me, my friends around me, I look at my home, I look at my cats and my dogs and all my other animals. And I thank God for every breath that he's giving me that I can do or I can be and the way I am with all of them and the way they are with me. So I'm content in my heart. And I do believe that if I would have changed anything in my life or if I would have not done the way I did things in my life, I maybe would have never reached here. It's almost like having a parallel life, you know, that if I didn't do this, then what would I have to do in this mode, in this mode? So it is, it is exactly, you know, the way I take it. So that's why I thank, whenever I go to a temple, whenever I am actually in front of my home temple, and this, uh, uh, you know, Sakshat Shivji is behind me, and, uh, you know, this, this, uh, he's, He's, uh, he, he knows, he sees that whenever I go, I go to thank. I must have rarely asked for something ever in my life. And I believe you manifest your positivity. You know, if you give out, if you give out positivity, you do positive, it definitely comes back to you. Yes. And I, I always believe that you always live by your intentions and it was, it from what you're saying, it seems that your intention, no matter what your age, have always been clear to you. Um, so going, let's reverse that question a little bit. Your younger self, what would your younger self notice the most about you now? That I have become more patient, less impulsive. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be all. <laughs> I think before I take a decision, and I think that I should thank my husband for that. Because he's, he was like, you know, you're so impulsive, wait, wait, have patience, you don't have patience, you don't have patience. And that has been drilled to me now, 16 years that we've been married. So now, yes, I wish I had been a little more patient, a less impulsive, uh, thought about things first, and then done things. So and I wish I was less sensitive. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't say that. You, you're an actor. You, if you hadn't been sensitive, we wouldn't have had all those amazing movies. <laughs> what is your favorite Ravina film? Uh, well, that will have to be my most recent film I did. That was Matra. Mm -hmm. uh, that's now on Amazon uh, Prime. Uh, I mean, if people haven't seen it, please see it because that is an issue that is very, very close to my heart. Uh, and it deals with abuse and violence against women and children. Uh, that is something that is really, really close to my heart, like I said. And uh, then, yes, my earlier films, probably Satta, Daman, Shul, uh, Shatriya, uh, Andaz Apna Apna, Dulhe Raja, actually all of them. So I can't even say that, okay, this is not my favorite and that is my favorite because I think one worked equally hard and hoped for the best for each film. Yes. Yeah. I, I personally like Bade Mia, Chote Mia the most. And of course, Andaz Apna. It's, I just laugh at how silly those movies are. But Do uh, you like Bade Mia, Chote Mia because I'm hardly there in the film? Or for what reason? Or for Amit Ji? I disco me jai. I only watch that song over and over again. That choreography well, I, is timeless. I, I do believe there is, there is, so do watch these films that I've named because there is much more to me than just those songs. <laughs> Though I thank God for giving me such great music in all my films. It's been wonderful. Your, I think uh, all the songs are really beautifully done. The choreography at that time has been timeless and I have watched Matra and I definitely would recommend everybody see it. It's just, just so well made and you are amazing in it. 
So thank you. Um, so what would you count as your biggest blessings? Everything around me is a blessing for me. How do I name it? Uh, everything that God has given me has been a blessing. Everything, every, every uh, you know, experience in my life is a blessing because it's a lesson learned. And I take that as a blessing. And that makes me, uh, you know, there are two ways people can take whatever happens to them in their life. Either you uh, take it positively or you take it, com you know, completely ne negatively and you go into a downward spiral. So it depends how positively you take everything and move on from it. So for me, I do believe that every person in my life is a blessing. Uh, I can say from my parents, I think from a rock solid upbringing uh, to meeting the man whom I wanted to spend the rest of my life with, to my wonderful children, all of them, uh, to my two older girls, to my two younger ones, to uh, their children, uh, in fact, uh, uh, it's, it's to, to my work team, to the people whom I work with, uh, people who deal with me day in, day out and handle me all the time, like my Rima. <laughs> they are blessings because they are uh, how they are with me and, and, and uh, they bear me and they tolerate me. And so it's, 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 it's definitely a blessing. So I have two granddaughters and we always wow. have children's um, children's vocabularies, right? They read books and they always have these ways of doing things. And yeah. so we had a, we had a, we were reading a book with my four year old. And um, so we were looking at all the things that, that are, you know, us. And I asked her, what is your superpower? And she said, you know, I, my superpower without blinking the first time I asked her when she was three, she said, my superpower is Baba, her dad. And then uh, one year again later, I asked her, what's your superpower? And she says, it, I like making people feel good about themselves. And, so uh, sweet. and it's true. I mean, she has a maturity that is beyond her. But I think we all do have our superpowers. We secretly know that. And uh, what is Ravina's superpower? I can say that uh, being a woman for me is... is is being a superpower in its own. Because I do believe that, uh, and yes, I'm not answering you like because it's a you know question that, oh my God, it's gonna, uh, I, I hope it does inspire people, but I strongly believe in it because I do believe women uh, have been built uh, emotionally uh, and, and within themselves uh, uh, an and inherent power uh, that they have. Uh, I think that's the reason why gave, uh, you know, God gave them the Shakti to reproduce and to recreate because they bring into this world a life, the female power. And uh, maybe men couldn't have handled the pain. <laughs> you know, even my husband wonders, like, you know, how do you guys do it? Um, so I think that's why God gave us that strength uh, to, uh, to, to procreate, to, to, to bring a life into this world. And I think that is one of the biggest gifts, gifts that we have. And I, I believe every woman, I mean, even in, uh, uh, you know, in, in I, I'll just take an example of a city like Mumbai. You see the women, how they work. They, they, they actually, they're like devis multitasking with, uh, you know, probably thousand arms. Whether they're looking after children, they're cooking their food, they're doing their office work, they're going to the office early in the morning, ironing their children's clothes, washing their clothes, uh, setting up their dabbas, setting up their husband's dabbas for office, and then leaving themselves for work. And when they come back from their office, that home routine starts all over again, helping the children with, you know, cooking the food, helping children with homework, then doing their own office work, then again, washing the clothes, then again. I mean, it's a full day's process. I mean, where does that power come from? So I thank God that I'm a woman because I do believe that that inner Shakti that he's given me to be able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, surface or, or rise again from any kind of issues or any kind of problems that is thrown to me. And the fact that we can swing it and we can do it really well is in a way a blessing and, and, and a superpower on its own. And I must say you have used your superpowers phenomenally. It has given me a segue into my next question to you. I, when I was 21, I, could, I didn't even know myself. 
let alone take responsibility for two grown children. And at 21, you adopted two girls, Uja and Chaya, who were 11 and 8. And you took responsibility for them. Tell us, how did that come about? And what gave you that, that power to just do that? The parents were no more. And uh, wherever the girls were, I thought that they were not uh, being brought up the way that they should have been. I believe that they should have had a better life. And uh, my mom and me, uh, my mom actually has been working for NGOs since I was a child. And I always used to follow her, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to orphanages, to other places and... Uh, help her out even when I was young, since I was in the 8th or ninth standard, I've always been with her and, and I've been doing uh, working with her. So I think this entire uh, trait comes from her. And uh, when I saw these girls and I, I, I told my mom and my dad, I said, you know, we do charity all, all over the place. We are helping so many people. This is something that is close to home. We are seeing this happen, whatever is happening to these two young girls. I said, let's just you know, at that time, single moms couldn't adopt. So I did become their legal guardian. And uh, we just one fine day went and got the girls home. And since then, they've been with us. Now, both of them are married. Both of them have their own kids. And it's just such a beautiful experience. And I love a house full. And that's what they do. They fill up my heart and they fill up my house. That's an amazing, amazing story. And I think uh, they are so proud to have you as their mom. Um, your, I'm, so now I'm coming to the conclusion that your mom is your role model. And uh, she, has, she has really influenced all these philanthropic work that you are doing, whether it's towards PETA or towards women or towards young girls. Um, she has been a major influence. Tell her, what is your mother like? She lost her own mom when she was just five years old. She was brought up by my mamas and my masis mostly because she was the youngest kid. And she's a, a, a very, very strong person. She's a tough nut to crack, I must say. Uh, she's a typical uh, Torian. She's a, a bull, not a bully, but she's a bull. And uh, I, I think that strength uh, uh, I've imbibed from her. Uh, but uh, mostly, I think that जो पूरा मुझे ये इन्फ्लुएंस है जिस तरीके से मैं काम करती हूँ जिस तरीके से I believe that nothing is impossible uh, and everything is possible is the trait that I've got from her. Yeah, you definitely have a very a very stubborn streak that makes sure that anything you take on, you have you have got to accomplish and uh, do it really really well. You know, from my dad, I learned humility. I learned, uh, you know, uh, righteousness. And, uh, you know, to do the right thing and, and, and to stand by it is always what I've learned from my dad as well. So I think it's a combination of both. A phenomenal parents. We would love to interview the whole family at some point because I'm sure everybody has uh, stories about Ravina that nobody else knew. Um, <laughs> as, you know, my teacher and mentor says, uh, Deepak says, love without action or action without love, both are meaningless. And uh, there is yet another fact in your life which may played a major role um, in probably how you have been nourished by your mother. And that is that you took in all the children from an orphanage into your own home and you housed them and then you actually gave them a place to stay. Um, the dignity that you gave to these children that would otherwise would not even have had love but when it comes followed by dignity with respect and a proper place for them to stay, um, you became a mother to all of them. How do you reflect on that? I, when I was my, my younger self, I never thought uh, of uh, things. I always knew that if I want to do it, there will always be a way and doors will open and then God is behind me. And if I'm doing the right thing, I'm sure you know, doorways will open and it will happen, whatever I want, uh, the, the way I want it to happen. Uh, I believed in, 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 in manifesting positivity. And uh, I think uh, these kids were in trouble. This is much before I took in my two girls, actually. Uh, and uh, I used to help around in uh, an orphanage, uh, which was just below my building uh, in the same area. And uh, I... I those sisters called me up once and they said uh, the, the the caretakers of those girls that 
the landlord is suddenly evicting them because he's that was that time was a property boom that he wants this emptied immediately this property because he's getting a better bigger rent from somewhere else so she was like i have 30 girls and i don't know where to go about i think 28 in, in total there were 30 people because there were two caretakers there were two sisters uh so i said okay now since it's an overnight thing uh y'all can come and stay in my in, in i had a small bungalow i can't say that i can show up that was big property but it was a small bungalow and i said y'all are most welcome and uh, they stayed there uh, in that bungalow uh, for about a year uh in that house of mine and and um, and then in that interim of that one year i helped them collect funds we bought a property in vasai and we built an entire orphanage over there aapka ghar chhota hoga lekin aapka dil bahut bada hai so you are you are blessed i would stay blessed um thank you the children have i don't know where they got their destiny from but uh, they got a brilliant mother who took care of them and i'm sure they are living very productive lives thanks to you yes i meet so many of the girls now from the various uh, you know often ages that i've helped one was in uh, called prem sadan in mad island one uh, one this one as well the basai one and i'm for example when i'm flying or i'm in the airport suddenly they'll come to me and say uh, uh, didi did you recognize me and i look at them and like oh my god and they've suddenly grown up they've got jobs they like you remember you used to come visit us and you used to take us for picnics and and you used to take us to see movies and i would be like yeah and then they would reema would be with me and then they tell reema the stories you know they used to come and stay with us like this and she used to do this and we used to do this and and i feel so proud of them that they all in such good jobs now they've completed their education and i think it's wonderful that that yes that that is a very satisfying uh, feeling then and also you know thank you for giving your voice for akshay patra because when we saw akshay patra's impact you know when you you give a meal in school girls show up and uh, when you educate girls like you are and you know helping to raise them they tend to have um, you know have lesser kids they get married later they tend to have jobs and they tend to educate their own child so what starts with one girl actually becomes something that takes over for generations to come and changes the outcome so true so tell me what attracts you to akshay pat you know i've been hearing a lot of good work that they had been doing and uh, especially when this uh, pandemic uh, erupted all over the world globally uh, i think we uh, we we really realized uh, the need of having uh, Uh, organizations like like akshay patra and the fact uh, that they were able to provide so much to people who had almost nothing and it was really gratis you know really gratifying uh, for me to extend uh, a hand and come up and say okay let's do this together because uh, probably through uh, my reach i can reach about 100 people you know 1000 people but through them they are uh you know providing help and uh, you know the, the the kind of needs that people have to so many of them and that is what i think that outreach is so fantastic the kind of work they've been doing is so fantastic so i'm really really proud that i uh, did uh, you know contact them and uh, got through to them and uh, we kind of help sponsor also a, a little bit uh, for them and uh, i'm sure that this association will go a long way in spreading a lot more good into the world so i'm going to come on the lighter side a little bit you make a lot of videos on tiktok with your daughters and uh, it looks like it's it's a lot of fun um you also have a lot of memes with celebrities with uh, with the songs that you do can you tell us a little bit about how that comes about do you guys just say oh let's do this song and can you take the audience through some of those steps Well no it's 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 my daughter who's my digital guru to be very honest i'm not even aware that tiktok existed till she brought that she's like you have to do this you have to do this you have to join tiktok and i honestly just joined to make her happy otherwise it's a it's it's extra work for me i'm very busy around the house and doing things so if someone tells me put on makeup and again get in front of the camera i really unless it's really important i don't uh, feel the need to So for me, it was almost a chore uh, that you know she'd say, "Mama, come on, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this." So it was only for her happiness, and uh, yeah, and uh, I mean those went really viral, <laughs> which I was like, "Oh my God, okay." But it was fun in the lockdown. Even they had their vacations; they were free, 
we had not, nothing much to do and so it was just for fun yeah. so thank you so much i'm going to wrap it up i know you are busy today and uh, you have other things to do but thank you so much for joining us we would love to have you back again with akshay patra and uh, absolutely really to, speak, to speak with you today. thank you thank you vandana it was great speaking and i'm wishing you guys a very very successful event god bless always thank you thank you bye bye